Holler if you hear me, and welcome to this week's edition of Luke Covers, because we've got a new thing going on in the world of business that's, of course, been shocking us, shocking the world, getting us all up, not necessarily everybody up in arms, but certainly up and paying attention to what is happening outside the world that we see in our front window. And that is, of course... Mr. Big Man in the business world of Tesla and of SpaceX, and also one of the founders of PayPal. That that doesn't get brought up as much as you think it would. But yes, Mr. Elon Musk, yes, he now owns, I believe it's 9.2% of Twitter and how much Twitter stock he bought. So yes, now he has this massive, massive interest in Twitter that he's owned through t stock as well as it being a bigger amount than the nefarious assholes at BlackRock who want to buy up as much land as possible so we can have nothing but people being able to, nothing but rent, as opposed to people actually being able to own homes and own property. Yes, it's between BlackRock and the Chinese government. Who will go and try to take over America's real estate first? Well... Maybe now we'll see their plans at trying to get absolute domination might just be one big giant paper dragon. I mean, anybody who looks it up already knows about when it comes to China and how they're supposed to be this economic superpower. Well, the way that they're going, they have plenty of their own damn debt, so they act like they're somehow being able to go and pay up and pay up and pay up all this money or do all these kinds of loans, do all these kinds of businesses, and somehow everything they're going to do is be an instant success and every business they're going to have and every deal they're going to have is going to be perfect and they're going to rule everything. Yeah, that's not how reality works. Not every business venture you're going to have is going to be a massive Herculean success. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so the next time you hear somebody yell at you about Trump having bankruptcies, yeah, yeah shut up, okay? Take a good long look at Bill Gates operating the Xbox at a net loss from the beginning, all the way back in 2001, yes. Bill Gates and the Xbox, yes, with Bill Gates' money, that's been a net loss for the man since it began, since it first launched Christmas 2001. So keep that in mind as well. And also, not exactly everything Musk does that has his name on also has been running at, at the same level of complete perfection. And remember Richard Branson, a guy, another big media-hungry business figure that the media loved to bring up. And what happened? Oh, well, the Virgin Megastores that used to be ubiquitous now, where do you see those? The uh, Virgin Cola that he had? Yes, uh, you hear about that anymore? Have you seen them out there in the limelight? Virgin Records, all the other things that have Virgin attached to it. Is that really good there? As somebody who actually used to have a Virgin, the mobile, the, yes, his uh, phone company has my phone service provider. Trust me. They might have all this hype around them, but it's a him, a Bloomberg a Warren Buffett, they're not all perfect. Not everything they're going to do is going to be great. Just look at the man I'm drawing right here, Todd McFarlane. Here's a guy who we forgot about, but of course there's all the jealous, catty little Neil Gaiman apologists, or at least maybe now they've stopped since he dared to go and have an NFT. So of course we all know NFTs make Greta Thunberg cry. So of course I love them and I'm never even planning on making or getting an NFT. So, there we go there, but besides the whole thing, they all like to bring up about the court case that involved who owned Angela and who made Angela or Cagliostro or Marvel Man and all that, there was other things that McFarland did that did not succeed. Of course, I don't just mean the Spawn movie in the 90s, I'm talking about actual honest -God business ventures that were his money, his company. Remember, when it came towards him getting Spawn out there as a comic book and him wanting that to be the base of having Spawn be this multimedia empire that had all these different pillars from toys to video games and movies and cartoons. Well, there were Spawn games, but they don't really get brought up. Like, I think the only time I've ever really seen people bring up Spawn and the video games they've done over the years in recent memory was the Angry Video Game Nerd review of all the Spawn games. The comic, yeah, the comic's been going, and recently now, after its 300th issue, has now been spiking up in sales and attention with what's going on there with issue 300 and the Spawn universe, and all the different new toys that McFarlane has been doing with the Spawn universe. And let's not forget, the production company, he started to go and do the Spawn cartoon, that also wound up getting Grammys and Emmys on the count of videos they would do for bands like Pearl Jam or the, of course, Spawn Cartoon Show that won an Emmy in its third and final season. 
all of that was out there, but guess what? What happened in the mid to mid to late 2000s? <laughs> Done. Went, went under. Bankrupt. What happened when it was Kurt Schilling and Todd McFarlane together were going to work on a venture to do their own kind of, I think, developer for doing World of Warcraft style games? Yeah, not only did that not really pan out, but I think Schilling wound up taking McFarlane to court. So, remember, nobody in their right mind is really going to look at McFarlane and look at his track record and think of him as some kind of failure or some kind of false prophet. Oh, he's had no success, so look at all this. But guess what? He's had bankruptcies, he's had business failures, so just look at these little details the next time you're going to have to put up with one of these assholes who look at a Musk or who look at a McFarlane or who look at a Trump and want to go and try and tell you what they know, which their mediocre opinions, their perpetually misinformed leftist anti-not-in-the-lefty-hive-mind anti dogma, give them a little truth bomb like that. They will scream and equivocate and hem and haw and be frustrated at being called stupid and ignorant as much as a Bernie bro when you explain to them about the democratic socialists of North Korea. And with Elon Musk, there's another one where... Remember, look at this guy, and you see he's certainly a guy who has succeeded very much in business. He started out, of course, with PayPal and everything he's gone afterwards, or at least the big ones that we know about that we see in Fortune magazine or that he talks about when he's in interviews, whether in print or on camera, or things that happen when you hear him on social media and the joke he's the jokes out there he's putting up. This is a guy who certainly knows more often than not what it takes to really build up a portfolio. It's not ex and everything he has, it's not like it's all immediately going to be out there making him something where he could just go cash out everything. With this guy and with this kind of companies, with this kind of business, it's not like he has like a big mountain of cash. This isn't this is the business reality of where he is with Tesla and where he is or where he was with PayPal or where he is with SpaceX. It's not like these guys just have some big mountain of gold when you hear their net worth or you see their net worth in, you know, Fortune magazine. That's not the same thing. There, it gets tied up in this stock or that bond or this company or that company. So it's not like what Musk has. Remember, the stock is not a physical thing. It's not out there on the periodic table. So what he owns of Twitter is interesting little paradox of what is out there in the world of the stock market. He has this ma this massive ownership. And yes, I know what 9.2. Oh, that's small. But remember, compare that ownership of that much stock to all the other holders out there, the shareholders, the stockholders, whatever word you want to use. And good Lord, he probably now has more control or more interest in that company or in that company stock than Jack Dorsey. And yes, of course, there's a lot of people out there who like how, you know, based he is in his posts. And yes, he does have the right kind of posts, the right kind of memes that does get on the bad side of the Portland Pinkos. But that doesn't necessarily mean he's a, a you know card-carrying Trump supporter or anything. You have to keep that in mind. It's just a matter of a smart guy, like the people out there in the world of comic skate, whether they're officially doing the Indiegogo thing or if it's the guys who have a podcast and they're not you know a paused little lefty bitch like Eric July, who everything he has, he's putting his own money behind his own comic and really wanting to start not just doing a comic but a whole real universe of stuff. These guys know where the money lies and they know where their like you know values or their worldview lies and they know what is the right kind of intersection, what is the right kind of nexus point between what it is that their interests are, what it is their business ventures or goals are compared to what are those people out there in the world thinking or saying that I know I'm going to get the most money out of. And they damn well know, uh, a, a July in his way, Elon Musk in his way, they know where there's actually going to be profit and they, they don't necessarily are not going to be the kind of people that are going to get the chance to either be just a hand puppet for corporations or they're in a way where they have their own fan base, they have their own customers, they have their own investors where they are not dependent upon shady ass BlackRock stuff, they're not dependent upon 
what's happening in the world where every major corporation has been under the thumb of the Chinese government. Although now you see with how the film business in general has been going downward, you see the people there. You see how now even the Hollywood Reporter, and I believe even Variety now, are penning these pieces that are publicly talking about the, the tail end, it being the end or the erosion of Hollywood and their place in wanting to kowtow to them. And how trying to kowtow to them has never been anywhere near as successful as they were expecting it to be. And one big self-aggrandizing puff piece worshipping Hollywood, wanting to make everything Mickey Mouse possible. They are deranged ideologues. But remember, for every China investor, I've mentioned before, there's also homegrown, quote-unquote, homegrown nefarious neo-Marxist asswipes who are going to be putting dark money behind people or places or corporations to try and go and pervert America into some kind of ideologue crap. Just take a good look, as I already mentioned, BlackRock, or what people in the comic book sphere have been mentioning about how they know this stuff doesn't make them any money, this woke crap in comics doesn't make them any money, and that the kind of audience that only ever wants anything to be just one giant signal boost to their neo-socialist worldview crap, those people aren't coming into comic book stores. They're not buying this shit. Then why would they keep doing it? And then comes ESG funding, this uh, environmental social governing. And these companies, these investment companies who will see what your, they will give your company a social credit score to see what are you doing for social justice. And based on how many of these fictional and fictionally dispossessed minority groups do you hire, do you employ, do you have content that caters to them? They're going to go in there and they're going to see if you please their senses, you're going to get this kind of investment. And these companies actually believe in that. They believe that's actually going to help them work when, yeah, we know it won't. And a guy like Musk doesn't necessarily need to go after those kind of people because he's actually really been able to earn his success like Todd McFarlane in the world of comics. But remember, there's still guys out there in the world of business that just because they're not immediately uh, paused little bitches does not mean that they're the kind of people that somehow are completely on the side of an Ethan Van Skyver or completely on the side of an Eric July and are going to go and be a defense in the name of protecting what American values are, American rights are when it comes to free speech or when it comes to companies not making everything into another far left echo chamber. So just keep that in mind. And also keep in mind, my, as you're seeing what I'm doing here, my very own online art store that is linked below in the description where I've got pen and ink pieces for sale at 25 bucks plus shipping. I've got color drawings that are 20 bucks plus shipping. I've got sketchbooks like this one right here. They are both handmade and pre-printed, filled with my original art. Those are only 25 a piece plus shipping. And of course, I also have commissions available. Pen and ink commissions are only 50 bucks plus shipping, and I have color commissions that are 25 plus shipping. There are also trading cards available for on commission. They are 20 bucks plus shipping, and they're the last item in my coffee sleeve super babes categories. Besides that, you can also make a donation just to support my work. Any dollar amount you'd like to help, or if you live outside the U.S., since my store can only ship within the U.S., and you want to go and get my work, well, for those, if you want to go and get artwork and you live outside America, simply tally up the amount, the price of the items you want together, and you add a $20 to that, and that amount of donation you would make would be a way to purchase my work outside of the traditional shipping. And that $20 addition is for the flat $20 international shipping and handling fee. Same thing goes for either in America or outside of America. You want to uh, commission me for something that's a little more unconventional from the pieces you see there available and the commissions uh, commissions that are there. You would simply have to go email me at lukekorolowitz at gmail.com, all in lowercase, all one word. I will then quote you a price, and you would have to go and pay for that as either a as a donation with either an additional $5 added on for the flat $5 shipping and handling fee American or the $20 flat international shipping and handling fee. So remember all of that when it comes time to bring some of my work onto your walls and into your homes so I can get my own business success in a way that will most certainly not be within the realm of whatever the assholes in MSNBC want to hear you say. 
So remember felines, slam it, lick it, suck it, and see you space cowboy.